Welcome back to Combat Sports Weekly. This is part of the show where we take a look at national and local headlines and also some highlights, pretty good highlights today. But we'll start off with the national rundown. Let's jump into those. <clears throat> Carlos Cana? Yeah, he defeated Thiago Alves in a very impressive second round performance. What did you think of him? I mean, I think he should be president. Coming back from an injury, an ACL <laughs> injury, that was huge. I think he's awesome. I, I'm such a fan of his, not only because I trained with him, but because of the type of person he is. You know, he rehabbed his injury properly. You see guys that want to try to get back on the mm -hmm. fast track. Um, he, man, it, it was a beautiful performance. And it's hard not to be a fan of his. There's another guy that same night that's not difficult to be a fan of just because of his style. Amir Khan mm -hmm. defeats Chris Algieri via unanimous decision. Algieri almost put him down like three times. Do you feel his style would give Mayweather trouble, or do you think Mayweather would easily handle it with Khan style? Uh, I, th I think uh, who's going to be ready for Mayweather, right? <laughs> yeah. so, so let's just throw him in there and see how he does. Yeah. I don't know. Well, good luck, Amir. Hopefully you get the fight September. Tim Bosch against Dan Henderson, another pretty big fight that's going down, at least for Tim Bosch, who's ranked number 13. That'll add, allow him to add a Hall of Famer. So this fight card, I don't know if you know, but all the odds, no one's more than a two to one favorite. Just unbelievable. You think Henderson can still make a run? I, I mean, I don't know what, what a run means necessarily. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always rooting for him. I think he's awesome, but um, ooh, you know, also Sean Jordan's on that card and he used to train down here. Yeah. So um, I'll definitely be rooting Sean for him. Jordan also on those prelims. Mm -hmm. Robert Guerrero against Aaron Martinez, PBC on NBC, a special showtime from Carson, California, 1 p.m. Carson, California, of course, the StubHub Center has been, you know, just the scene to epic fights going down. So Robert Guerrero, I think he's the only fighter to fight twice on PBC, on, on NBC. So very impressive for him. Even though he lost the last fight against Keith Thurman, uh, na I guess nationally and internationally, uh, this fight, Miguel Cotto against Daniel Gill in a fight that's for the 160-pound title, but Miguel Cotto forced in the contracts to have them fight at 157. What do you think of not meeting at a weight that the title is for? I don't know. That's crazy. But but um, I'm also Only a boxing. fan of Cotto. Only boxing. <laughs> I'm also a fan of Cotto and, and how he's uh, just a veteran of the sport. And, and hey, man, like you put your time in, I guess you can make your own Obviously rules. gives him a little bit of an advantage also. So that's enough of the national international headlines. Let's jump into the local ones. I guess locally, oh, this is pretty yeah. big news. Chavez Jr. You could potentially fight in El Paso, Texas next month in July against Marcos Reyes. What do you think of Chavez Jr.? He's fought in El Paso before, but it was at the Sun Bowl. He lost, you know, his last fight. Oof. So it's, it's, it's really tough. Do you think, you know, this fight is an easy one for him to bounce back with? I don't know if any fight's an easy <laughs> fight for to bounce back off of that yeah. performance, you know? And, and from what I've heard around the boxing circuit, being around um, Danny Romero's gym a little bit, he said that uh, he's back in the gym, he's training really hard, he has this new fire lit underneath him, but um, I hope so, man. I wouldn't, I mean, I don't know. Let's certainly hope so, especially if it's in the local area and we can go check out that fight, of course. Here locally, again, and we'll stay in El Paso, Joseph Abeco and Juanito Rubia fought in the main event of Roy Jones Jr.'s promoted card. Uh, Abeco, former champion himself, won by fourth round TKO. So hopefully Roy Jones Jr. brings more cards here to the regional seen this especially because we need it we're kind of dry right that's now that's what i was just gonna say fights. selfishly i'm glad to hear that the roy jones type cards are getting closer yeah. and and uh, i'm all about boxing right now yeah so well hopefully if it hits the las cruces or even albuquerque yeah that'd be that'd be incredible uh, another local fight here in buffalo thunder taking mm -hmm. place saturday isaac valley flag takes on travis Coyle. both guys have very similar records ike of course trying to make his way back to the ufc He's one of your teammates. What's he look like in the gym? I think he's. Uh, I think he he looks great right now. I, I think that it's a you're fighting for a different reason at this point, you know. And he's really has he still has fight left in him, and that's why he's fighting. So I think it'll yeah. be a great fight for him. Former UFC veteran, of course, Isaac Valley Flag, a guy that's a current UFC guy and based out of the Albuquerque area. Fit NHB's Rake Borg. I don't know if you saw this news, but he's ranked now. He was ranked 15th yesterday. He jumped up to 14th because they cut a guy. So I mean that makes it three guys from a New Mexico high school that are ranked in that flyweight division. John Dodson, of course, Moriarty, and Joseph Benavides down in, oh, in yeah. Cruces. Mm -hmm. And you have you know, Ray Borg. What do you think, think of that, being ranked? He's, he's crazy, up there now. Right? He's one of the uh, best in the, I, I, in the He's league. been on a heck of a streak, you yes. know? So I think he deserves that ranking, absolutely. Yeah, so that's something we'll look forward to. Hopefully a potential New Mexico versus New Mexico guy at the 125-pound you know, rankings. That'd be huge. 
Let's jump into the highlights. We have some pretty good ones. Bam! Out. There you go, your boy, Carlos Condit. Oh, beautiful destruction. Albuquerque, New beautiful. Mexico. He had a tough first round against Thiago Alves, who did a good job defending. But after Carlos Condit got his feet wet, it was all over. That two, I don't even know what you call it, two elbow combination, that, the, that type of precision, I, I don't know, precision, I should say, no, I don't know if anyone else has it. I think it was amazing. Um, it, I've seen him go over, look do that this. drill that how many times in the gym and, and Huge it's... Huge takedown. Look at that. His oh, nose at his actually nose went into in his, his forehead. forehead. Just as unbelievable. Ooh. Here's another five from that same night. Look, Chris Algieri with that right hand. And Algieri doesn't have a whole lot of power in here against Amir Khan. Amir just letting him catch him. I don't think Amir, you know, was ready for a crafty Algieri with some of those shots. Algieri changed his style, you know, right after the the second round and became more of a brawler rather wow. than a technician. What do you think of, uh, you know, the heart that Algieri showed? Yeah, I thought it was great. I mean, and, and to not have that power and, and put Still it almost, almost put him down. Yeah, absolutely. I, you think about somebody that does have power. Look at him just shaking it off like no big deal. Yeah, so it was actually a pretty decent fight. It wasn't a fight of the year type status, but a very, very solid fight. Something that, you know, boxing needed. Here it is, Jorge Linares. What, my favorite boxer, to be honest. The last three years, Linares is just, his style is just beautiful, the way he actually fights. He took on Kevin Mitchell in a fight where the judges, one judge actually had him down by six rounds. This is the 10th round TKO, look at this. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if I'm gonna warn you right now, if you don't like gory stuff, you're gonna see this hematoma and cut that Mitchell has, so you better turn away right now. You can see it from the side, look at that. Left side of the eye, look at that hematoma. Enormous, oh, oof. just unbelievable. Yikes. The things that Cut split and hematoma. Open. Jorge yeah. Linares from Venezuela Beautiful. continues his reign as champion there. And here we go. Kel Brook, a guy that we've been talking about, a guy that I want Amir Khan to fight. I easily think these guys can sell 80,000 seats. Absolutely. I think so too. This is so exciting, so clean combinations. Yeah, absolutely. Look at this. Just the precision and power. That's the two things. And Amir you know, might be hesitant taking on a guy like that because how much do you really have to win if you got a, if you potentially have Floyd Mayweather? So hopefully they can make that Kell Brook versus Amir Khan fight if Mayweather versus Khan does not work. Look at this. Granted, the competition wasn't the best, but still, Kell Brook does what he has to do to I keep just that like that uh, inside nitty gritty hands on type boxing, you know? And right there. And for guys that end a fight, you know, that's what you ultimately mm -hmm. want to see. Not leave it to the hands of the judges, a lot of people see. And, uh, you know, Kell Brook does a great job of either taking to the judges or knocking people out. Exactly. So, we're talking to your boy next. Isaac Valley flag right around the corner, and then we got the round table. Stay tight.